So uh, this this case is of a 46 year old lady who complained of headache, giddiness, and weakness since eight months. She didn't have any visual disturbances or any pulmonary or GI symptoms. Uh, the MRI sequence uh, MT1 contrast showed a fourth ventricular lesion which measured 24 into 23 millimeters. It was cystic with an intracystic solid nodule. And the radiologist's uh, opinion was that it is possibly arising from the ependymal lining and high grade. That's why the first possibility was of a high grade ependymoma because of the location, a medulloblastoma and a pilocytic astrocytoma, though uncommon in this age group, was also considered. An intraoperative frozen section was sent, uh, which showed a cellular tumor, and the possibilities given were high grade glioma versus a round cell tumor. Going to the digital images, so this is under the lowest magnification, 0.5x. And as you can see, the excision biopsy is adequate and shows a highly cellular tumor with in-between uh, thick-walled vessels. The tumor was heavily cauterized and compromising the morphology in many of the areas. There were some clear cells. In the preserved areas, the tumor was composed, uh, it was arranged in sheets and nests. There were a lot of these hyalinized vessels forming a cup around the tumor. Some of the areas showed a nodular pattern. There were preserved areas, again, to show you that there is a nodular pattern to the tumor with thick-walled vessels and a rich vascular network. This is at a little higher magnification. You can see there are nodules of varying size, maybe a little bit of retraction artifact. In between, there were vessels. And the tumor was composed of a fairly monomorphic population of cells. Again, to show, there were some uh, bigger nuclei, but overall, the individual cells looked similar. There were round to oval nuclei with maybe small inconspicuous nucleoli and basically a finely uh, speckled chromatin, finely granular to speckled chromatin. There were occasional areas of uh, apoptosis. And in some areas, the tumor showed a clear cell cytoplasm with some pleomorphic nuclei. In preserved areas, there were mitosis. In many of the foci, the tumor cells were arranged around a central fibrillary like stroma, giving rise to homerite appearance. There were areas of tumor necrosis and maybe a suspicion of a tumor embolus. In some of the areas, the uh, cells show nuclear molding. So just to emphasize again, it was a cellular tumor composed of nest of small round cells. There were areas of comedonecrosis and there was a nodular pattern to the tumor. The nodular pattern was highlighted by reticulin stain. To summarize again, it was a highly cellular tumor composed of small blue undifferentiated cells arranged in lobules and nest enclosed by reticulin stroma. There was necrosis, there was a rich vascular network with hyalinized vessels, apoptosis, mitosis, nuclear molding, and homerite-like rosettes were seen. Based on the location and the above morphology, a first differential was an ependymoma. Again, uh, though uncommon in this age group, but because of the location, medulloblastoma, embryonal tumors can occur here. Central neurocytoma can show like this stippled chromatin. The other tumors which can have similar morphology are pineal or peanut bar evings. Pilocytic astrocytoma, glioneuronal tumors can occur at this location. In fact, uh, rosette forming glioneuronal tumor occurs in fourth ventricle. However, this will have a these will have a biphasic morphology. Choroid plexus tumor will have a papillary pattern and is common in ch uh, children. Uh, the central peanut, of course, has been replaced by embryonal tumors and uh, the prototype of which is medulloblastoma. If at all it is an ependymoma, then the molecular subtyping has to be done. 
So we started with an initial panel of GFA, GFAP, which was negative. Not even the rosettes were positive for the stain. Olic 2, P53. P53 is a marker for high-grade glioma. Olic 2 can be negative in ependygoma. However, these three, all three together were negative. Hence, glioma seemed to be less likely. However, the EMA showed a nice cytoplasmic membrane positivity with a paranuclear dot. And because the differential was a medulloblastoma, we did do a synaptophyte skin, which was brilliantly and strong diffuse positive. Beta ketanin, a marker for wind pathway, was negative. To grade the tumor, the slide was subjected to whole slide imaging. And the high MIP uh, index areas were marked and circled and squared. And the calculation came as 19.69 as the MIP. So based on our initial panel, ependymoma was unlikely, though third ventricular ependymoma and SEGA can be focal synaptopycin. Usually, these are also positive for S100 and GFAP. Medulloblastoma and uh, Glioneuronal tumor, sorry, medulloblastoma does not show EMA positivity. Glioneuronal tumors are biphasic. The other differentials were peanut bar evings, neurocytoma. However, in these also, EMA may be focal. That got us thinking to whether it's a metastasis or from a neuroendocrine primary. So we did do a pancytokeratin and TTF, both of which were strong and diffuse positive. The slides and blocks were sent to NIMHANS too, and they did further markers like LIN28A, which is a marker for embryonal tumor with multi layered rosettes and medullo epithelioma, which was negative. INI1 uh, uh, was retained, excluding an ATRT. Note that these tumors can also show pan cytokeratin and EMA positivity. NKX2.2 was negative, ruling uh, out a PNET bar Ewing sarcoma. SOX10 for a remote possibility of melanoma, neuroblastoma was negative, and CDX2 was done later for a GI primary, which was also negative. So the diagnosis was made in view of a diffuse synaptopycin positivity, dot like EMA and pancytokeratin, along with TTF, favors on metastatic neuroendocrine tumor, and a further workup for primary was suggested. Like I mentioned earlier, diffuse synaptopycin is unusual in ependymoma, though third ventricular tumor and SEGA can show focal synaptopycin positivity. EMA and pancytokeratin dot like positive excluded an unadult medulloblastoma and other tumors. TTF and EMA can be positive in cordoid glioma. This no longer exists in the recent classification. It can also be seen in granular cell tumor and spindle cell oncocytoma of pituitary. However, the location did not support that. And these tumors are usually also positive for S100. The story did not end here. The further uh, dototag PET scan and FTG PET scan did not reveal any primary lesion. Hence, a review report of primary CNS grade 2 neuroendocrine neoplasm was given. Primary neuroendocrine tumors of brain are very rare. In fact, metastatic itself constitute only less than 5%. These need to be differentiated. The primary versus a metastatic need to be differentiated because primary neuroendocrine tumors have a good prognosis. They need longer surveillance and uh, to rule out recurrences. And the survival is excellent. Primary neuroendocrine tumor, in contrast to a metastatic neuroendocrine tumors, are usually seen around the ventricles this may be because of paraventricular nucleus, which is a group of neuroendocrine cells, and that could be the reason they are situated close to the ventricles. There is one more case report which, say, uh, which similar to ours, showed TTF positivity. However, after two years of follow-up, there was no primary in bronchopulmonary. Hence, it was concluded as a CNS primary neuroendocrine tumor. Off late, they, these tumors are becoming more common. Just a little bit about the follow-up. The repeat CT scan did show a reduced metabolic activity after six cycles of radiation. The patient did show sim symptomatic improvement. And a recent whole body PET scan done after nearly four months does not show any other lesion elsewhere. 
and supporting a diagnosis of a primary brain neuroendocrine tumor. I thank my neurosurgery, radiation oncology, and MNS team, along with my colleague Dr. Minakshi, to arrive at who helped me to arrive at this diagnosis. Thank you.